Mina, ohayou gozaimasu. Jesus freaking gamer here. Back with another, believe it or not, 30 minute message. Why am I making so many 30 minute messages recently, you ask? Well, simply because my little notes here say that I am due to do yet another one. So, this is part of Saturday's video routine. This is um, Saturday's official preaching video. It's going to be yet another 30 minute message. And you're like, Brandon, you said you needed hours to crank these things out. What? You're doing, you've done this, what, three days in a row now? Why are you doing so many? Well, let me tell you, it has been several hours um, late into, well, it's my Saturday video, but it's Sunday morning, but again, you guys know at this point, this is a fairly regular thing for me. <clears throat> hey, I'll say, excuse me, spring is kind of getting to me. It's uh, affecting asthma a little bit, and so if I, if I cough a little bit or seem to take a few deep breaths, I'm fine, don't worry, I've done my medication, just uh, good old spring. So just wanted to go ahead and cover that real quick. But yeah, why so many messages in a row? Simply that I've owed, apparently I've owed several videos for several things for a while. So I want to go ahead and do those now at this time. Why? Well, there are reasons, which I'll get to um, very, very shortly, not in this video, but within the next few days on the channel. So if you're interested, by all means, stay tuned. Um, it's good. It's going to be quite the ride, uh, especially for me, the one kind of at the conductor seat of this grand experiment called Jesus Freaking Gamer. Man, I love doing this stuff. This is good. Um, Thirty-minute messages do take time and preparation, but and I again, this is something I've been thinking about and pondering about. Today's message came very unexpectedly. It was one of those things where I talked with someone in regards to something. And it just really hit me. Remember how I said, well, maybe you don't remember if you didn't see yesterday's message. So I'll tell you, sometimes if something hits me, it can just be like instant message, just bam, like that. And I can just have something to ramble on about for an extended period of time. Today, something like that happened. Um, I don't have a complete answer to this to this particular conundrum that I'm presenting. Some of you will think as you watch the video, Dude, it's really obvious what you should do. Why are you even thinking about this? Some of you may think to yourself, well, yeah, the answer is obvious, but it's the it's not a Christian answer. The Christian answer is kind of a kind of a dumb one. Some of you will feel that way, um, especially if you are not a Christian yourself, and things such as Christian morality and the Word of God do not bind your actions, your words, or your thoughts. And then some of you may very well agree with me and say, you know what? That's a good point. Um, I would, I always like to see comments in the comment section down below. I, I like feedback. I like questions. I even like some rebukes every now and then saying, you know what, that, that's really not correct. So I like it normally in this video, especially since I am coming right out from the beginning and saying, I don't have a resolution. I don't have a definite answer. By all means, please, for those of you who are willing to watch this entire video and hear me out, please leave your comments in the section in the comment section down below. It will be greatly appreciated. I'd love to hear thoughts and comments on this. And the reason I'm coming to you guys before I have a resolution and a definite um, like, you know, here's what the Word of God says, here's what I should do, you know, th this is the answer. The reason I'm coming at you guys with this is one, this is a really really personal topic for one so yeah obviously you know <laughs> there are some things it, there are some things that everyone wants to keep hidden away from the world some things you really don't want to mention and I kind of feel like this this topic it definitely approaches that as um you've seen in the title message um, you know marriage is not something to be taken lightly especially as a Christian, since we believe, you know, one man and one woman for one lifetime. That's, it's probably the biggest covenant. No, it's definitely the biggest covenant that we humans can make. It's a contract to stay with the other person literally for the rest of our lives, literally for the better or for the worse, whether it's in richness or in poorness, in sickness or in health, until death do us part. Um, they, that those old O's may sound cliche at this point, but they reflect, to the best of my knowledge, and several Christians um, tend to agree with me on this, reflect what God thinks about marriage. So I don't have a definite answer, so let's hop right into this, shall we? 
Oh boy, <laughs> I'm feeling a little. Yeah, it's weird for me to feel awkward about anything. Sometimes I'm like, "Yeah, this isn't very pleasant," but and then I go ahead and share it anyway because you know I'm committed to honesty in my personal life and on my YouTube channel. One of the things that I think draws people to YouTubers, and of course, I want those YouTube muns. Um, <laughs> and I want to be successful. Although more than that, I want to be a good Christian man. I want to live my life for Jesus Christ because ultimately I'm going to stand before Him in judgment. And he's going to declare my life a success or a failure. And the fact that he is my God and I'm going to heaven, that alone is like huge, huge. If I had more hands like Goro from Mortal Kombat, I would show them on camera. Huge success. Just the fact that I'm going to heaven. But I would like to hear a well done from him. I really, really would. And marriage is a really big part of that. Um, whoever I marry... Um, if you look into, I, I only have really one scripture prepared for this message. A lot of this is going to be my personal path, my personal experience. And I'm still going to include an altar call at the end for those interested in becoming Christians and th for those who God is tugging on the heartstrings at the end of this message. But I really only have one scripture prepared, and that's in Ephesians 5. So if I pull anything else out, you know, Google behind me, search behind me, make sure I'm saying it, quoting it, or at least paraphrasing it correctly. My prayers, it's in one of the Peters, and I do forget exactly where, but my prayers can literally be hindered if I am not in a proper relationship with my future wife. That will literally hinder my relationship with God, my relationship with my best friend, um, the one who loves me beyond anyone else. He'll never stop loving me, but my relationship with him will be altered depending on how I do my marriage. If I do my marriage correctly, then that will be a benefit and a boon to my personal life, to my spiritual life, to life all around. Marriage is a blessing. Contrary to a lot of popular um, modern beliefs, marriage is a blessing. It's a good thing. And I'll say, and I, I don't know how many points I'll get to in 30 minutes. Um, my gosh, time really does fly. And this is a subject I could be very rambly on. And yet, at the same time, I want to be detailed. Maybe I'll make this a two-parter. We'll see. Who knows? But it, that influences my relationship with God. And because it's the biggest contract we humans can make, and God is a very contractual, or to use the biblical term, covenant-oriented God, um, God takes these things very, very ultra-seriously. Like when you say you're going to do something, like Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't make, don't, in, in the New Testament, basically the rule is you don't make oaths anymore. You simply keep your word. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't have to be bound to a contract for your word to matter. If you say something, it should stand. If you, if you don't say something, then of course there's no obligation because you said nothing. It doesn't exist. So thinking before you speak is very, very, very important for a Christian. It's something I've tried to take to heart in this channel. I try to measure my words carefully. Um, the relationship I have with you guys publicly is it's different from the relationship I have with people personally. Um, to our best friends and to the people we're close to, we'll say things differently because one, they know our hearts better than other people. So if I said something like off the cuff or just like straight out of my gut and it wasn't filtered at all, you guys may not know what I'm talking about because you, as much as this is much, this is a much better um, way to get to know someone. It's better than Hollywood or some international star. Not that. I'm anywhere near that big because I'm I'm not I'm certain I'm certainly not, um, but yeah, like even the big wigs like PewDiePie and Markiplier aren't nearly as well known as the Hollywood guys, but still the relationship they have with their fan base is a whole lot deeper than anything people from Hollywood have with their fan base. They have so many more fans, but all you do is really read articles and watch interviews on YouTube. You can you might actually get your comment responded to, and now on YouTube it can even be pinned and loved by the creator. Of that, of that particular content, so it's a much better relationship and it's a much closer relationship. Nonetheless, it's still not the same as an actual relationship with the person in real life. There's still that personal touch missing, and hey, even in real life, even the people that you work with, family members, it shouldn't be your wife or your children, but certain family members, um, even certain friends, people that you would count not just an ally or an acquaintance or a friendly acquaintance, but an actual friend, someone that you can talk to, someone that you actively spend time with. 
you know, probably text on the phone on a semi or maybe completely regular basis. There are still varying degrees of intimacy. There are varying degrees of closeness. There are certain things you'll share with some friends, and I'm not, I'm not talking about gossip. Gossip isn't what I'm referring to. I'm not talking about talking about other people. Not like that. It's not gossip, but just sharing your thoughts, sharing who you are with people. Some things you'll share with some friends that you wouldn't share with others, and it's not a matter of this person's a bad person or not. You know, Hopefully you don't have any friends that you consider bad. Uh, if you have a friend that you consider to be a bad friend, rebuke them and tell them why you are breaking fellowship with them, why you are cutting off your friendship. I would encourage you to cut off friendship from bad people. Let them know why. Don't just you know, retreat and walk away and be like, eh, I'm just going to kind of ignore you. Tell them why. A good, hard rebuke. One, even if it makes them incredibly angry, you're, you're breaking away from that bad bind. And number two, you don't want to associate too closely with what you consider to be bad people. And if those people are, even if those people are Christians, if you think religion is just a toxic, horrible thing, then yeah, watch how close you are to Christians. Even watch how close you are to me. Maybe you're just randomly surfing through the internet and you saw this video and for some reason you've watched it 11 minutes in. Uh, if you think Christianity is a bad thing and the Bible is a bad thing, honestly, you probably want to stay away from me because I am completely infatuated with Jesus and I'm in love with the Word of God. Love Jesus to pieces and I love what His Word says to me. So, if that's not your thing, if you think that's bad, I am definitely not your cup of tea. And when it comes to a spouse whether it's a husband or a wife, that is the closest, most intimate you will get to anybody in this world. You definitely want to choose correctly. You definitely want to choose right. That you don't get any closer to anyone, and there shouldn't be anyone you share more with than your spouse. You really should be able to tell your, ideally, I'm like, I'm trying to, are there situations where you wouldn't tell your spouse something? Well, Potentially, like if you're in certain levels of government, or you're like a you know a psychiatrist or psychologist, a lawyer, you know, the, like the, the the client, and I say the patient, doctor, confidentiality, or the lawyer, you know, um, client and lawyer confidentiality. I can think of some things where I can think of some circumstances where you wouldn't share everything with your spouse. But barring that, barring some very extraordinary circumstances, generally. You share everything with your spouse. And let's be completely honest, for those of you who are married, you share some of that stuff with your spouse as well, even though you technically shouldn't. And please don't share anything about that in the comments. That would get you in trouble. Not sponsored by Arizona, but my gosh, they are good. Um, <laughs> Got to keep the throat uh, moist as I continue to talk. Um, yeah, barring extraordinary circumstances like that, your spouse is the one you confide with the most in the world. They're your best friend. So when you make this lifelong contract, you want to be with the best person. You don't want to settle. You don't want to go for less. You want the best. Well, I'll say it's so weird. Like I, I try to set up everything, and I try to be detailed, and I feel like I keep going for a while before I get to the point. I say 30-minute messages are a hassle, and it, even this one took me took me a while to think through and ponder on if I even wanted to share it, but at the same time, now that I am sharing it, there's quite a bit to share. And since this is, a, and this is also one of those topics that like I can mention in the other message where you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. And so today, a lot of stuff has kind of come to a head. It's come to the surface, and I'm able to think a little bit more broadly, a little bit more deeply about it. And I feel like I'm leaning towards a resolution. So, but while, until I come to the resolution, I was like, let me just share this with my audience. Um, because not not everyone a lot of a lot of churches and a lot of pastors well to be honest even my own church and my own pastor you don't hear a lot about losses and I don't mean like you know deaths or um, well actually really just deaths um, if someone isn't healed from a prayer you don't hear about that if someone's marriage fails you don't hear about that if someone you know, is suffering through a sinful issue, you certainly don't share that. You don't want to make that public knowledge. But failures, uncertainties, doubts, fears, excuse me, insecurities, those things aren't normally shared in church. I can understand the, 
the, the, I can understand why, because you don't want to spread fear and doubt among your people. I mean, no leader wants to spread fear and doubt among their people. I get that. But there comes a certain level and a certain, and I understand you, there's also, again, the whole, you know, there's definitely a confidentiality between the pastor and his people. I totally get that at the exact same time. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to give the identity of the person that I spoke with this. I'm um, not any of the people that I've spoken with about this. Um, but the issue is mine. The thoughts are mine. And even though I'm not going to mention the names of the people, um, these are all you know my thoughts, my fears, my doubts. I can certainly share my own personal stuff with you on my own personal channel that I manage and run and upload to. And I don't think I, like, I may have deleted one or two videos, but if I did, it was like really really quickly i think I've, i was like except for like oh wait hold on i didn't edit that right or oh wait i didn't want to upload that video to begin with or oh wait this video is crap i usually delete if i did delete a video it was very very quick i generally do not delete videos from my account that are uploaded um i don't know when i put out something i'm pretty happy with what i put out but yeah um there comes a point where you need to be real with your people, you need to be honest. And you know, when you don't have the answers, when you don't know where you're going, when you don't know what you're doing, I think it's incredibly helpful, especially when Christian leaders, and I maybe it's a little presumptuous to call myself a Christian leader. I am a leader, I mean, it's maybe, it's a smaller role, but I am a leader in my church, and this YouTube channel is my own entity, Entity, it's my own thing. So I am the compl I am the CEO, headmaster of Jesus Freaking Gamer. Um, that is me. So I am completely in control of this. And there comes a point where Christians need to be honest with people about their doubts and their fears. There comes a point where you just have to talk and say, "Hey, I don't get it. I don't understand." And I, I waited till I got to a certain point in this in this issue before I decided to share it. And now that I've gotten to this certain point in the issue, um, I want to share it. So, with all of, all of that groundwork laid, all of those things talked about, it is all this whole thing. Well, first of all, it started with. Let me start out with a little bit more background. Um, as I've said in many videos, I am 36 years old, so my age is not hidden from anyone. And, I, and I've all, I shared this in one or two videos, not a ton, but I am also still a virgin, thank God. Um, and to me, that is certainly not a mark of shame. Um, that's very intentional, that's very purposeful. Honestly, getting sex is not hard. Um, if you know the people to talk to and the places to go to, it's not hard to get. So if you simply want to get laid for a night, that's not difficult. But that's not my intention. That's not my goal. As a Christian, I am waiting on a Christian marriage and a Christian woman. I want the person God has for me. And, I'm not, and I'll just say right now, I'm not necessarily limiting myself to one person. I do not believe that God has given me, or really anyone, I don't, unless it's a very specific calling, I don't necessarily believe that there is just like one person in the entire world that God created compatible with you. I think if you're both Christians and you're of the opposite sex and you're both committed to Jesus first and foremost, you can probably marry and it'll work. Uh, depending on your personalities and your backgrounds and your social and financial status, those are important. Depending on those things, your marriage will be easier or harder. But if you're both committed to the Lord and you realize that He is the ultimate source of your love, your provision, and your security, marriage can work. Because when you're committed to Him and, and actively loving Him and loving your neighbors, yourself, or the person you live with, your spouse is going to be the first recipient of that love. So, and that's not to say a, mar a Christian marriage can't fail. Um, I'm going I'm to go into I'm going to go into that here uh, at some point soon as well. It's probably going to be a two-parter, which is fine. Um, I, they, the last few messages have been multi-parters, so there's nothing wrong with that. But the Christian, a, a Christian marriage, you know, if, you know, even if things aren't lined up correctly and the stars aren't aligned, so to speak, it can work. It can absolutely 
work, despite the current statistic that I believe it's 50% of marriages in the United States fail, in and outside the church. Not just the non-Christians, the Christian marriages are failing too at a very rapid rate. And that is ridiculously sad to me, because if there's going to be a moral um, holder-upper, yeah, that was good English there, a moral holder-upper in a society, it should be the church. If anyone's going to be the righteous person, the saint, uh, the upholder of that which is just and true, it should be the church. And marriage is a sacred thing. God's the one who said it's not good for man to be alone. That's uh, Genesis, uh, actually, I was like, hold on, chapter 1 or 2? No, that's uh, chapter 2, where he says it's not good for man to be alone. So, marriage is sacred. God took, God took Adam's rib and formed Eve out of it. He formed Adam out of the dust. He formed Eve from Adam's rib. Woman came from man originally. That's how close the bond is. And of course, in the middle of sexual intercourse, the man is inside the woman. Um, I'm going to be completely honest in these videos, so and that that's the way I treat every subject. I don't need to use profanity or speak crudely to be completely honest, but I'm going to talk about marriage. Sex is going to come up. Um, and I'm not even going to put a disclaimer in the video for that. If you're going to talk about marriage, <laughs> I'm not talking to a bunch of elementary schoolers. I'm talking to whoever watches this video. So I don't think there's a need to... And actually, in this day and age, if all they hear are my videos, they're blessed. Because on the internet, we all know the main thing that's on the internet. And it's not Christian preaching. <laughs> Jeez. But marriage is sacred. It was ordained by God. It was from God because that was God's design. That's what God wanted to do. He didn't just create man and woman so they could have sex, feel good, and that's it. Or even just have children, even though, even though both feeling good and having children are two huge benefits of marriage and two parts of the design. There's also the, there are tons of aspects to it, but the other, the other aspect would be the fact that man should not be alone. That was the first thing God said. That was the first, I was like, well, I was like, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, it's technically not the first thing he said, but in Genesis chapter 2, as Adam, basically God is bringing all the animals to Adam to say, you know, who is, who's a, who can be a good helper for man? And of course, God knew the answer, but he wanted Adam to know the answer as well. And so after Adam named all the animals, it was like, okay, a suitable helper was not found. And it's not good for man to be alone. That being with someone is a key aspect of marriage. And that's, um, and from what I understand from the person I spoke with, that's really big on the female side. Um, it, it, she, she said that essentially, you know, um, women give sex for, for the emotional bonding, and men give the emotional bonding for sex. That sounds a bit on the crude side, but in all honesty, there's a lot of truth to that. There's a whole lot of truth to that. Um, I was saying I'll get more into that later as well. I was, I, I was like, I feel like this entire 30 minutes has basically been preamble. I was like, well, I have a few more minutes to go, so let me launch into it a little bit. What started off this entire thing a few months ago? Uh, so with all that background, uh, you guys know I'm rambly. You guys know I tend to prolong my points, not for the sake of just, you know, putting out a 30-minute video, but for the sake of clarity. So you guys know exactly where I'm coming from. I speak very detailed. Definitely got that from my mom. Um, <laughs> she needed me to speak in a lot of details so she would understand exactly where I was coming from. That's just how she comprehended things best. And so I got that from her as a teacher. That comes in handy. All of this came about. From my favorite anime, Clannad. This entire the thought process that I've been going through came from the anime series Clannad. Uh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite visual novel of all time. My favorite work of fiction of all time, and probably my second or third favorite anime of all time. It's so good, in my opinion. And as I've said in some previous messages, 
I remember in the middle of my backslidden years when I was away from God, interestingly enough, of all things, it was Clannad that reminded me, hey, there's good in the world. There's light and life and hope in the world. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. It may not necessarily be all right. It may be horrible, actually. But even if all you see is horror, that doesn't take away from the fact that there's good in the world outside of your horrible little box. And at that time in my life, just, I mean, that message, that sounds so incredibly bleak, right? But to me, that was a lifeline. To me, that showed me, even if I never experienced it, life can be good. It was, it was, it was a dark part of my life. Um, and certainly, I would say at this point, you know, the majority of that was my fault for giving up. Um, the other people who pushed me to giving up certainly bear their responsibility and God will judge them. But it was ultimately my fault for giving up. Um, I bear full responsibility for my own giving up and giving in. Thank God he rescued me from that. Not only did he save me once, he uh, brought me back to himself. And I'm so thankful for that. Now, you too. And for those of you who don't know the moment in Clannad, there's a moment when um, the main character, Tomoya, he is actually in prison visiting his dad. He was about to be promoted at work, found out his dad was doing some illegal activities. His dad was locked up, and he was denied promotion into management status. So no big promotion, no making the big bucks, completely turned down. His boss simply said, well, we know you're a good guy. We won't fire you. But the upper management has decided to drop your name from the list of promotions. So he brings Nagisa, his girlfriend, with him and basically just says to his father, you know, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? You're not the only person in the world. Even though I'd love to not be your son, I am. And the world constantly reminds me of that. And, so he, and then he proceeds to say, well, as far as I'm concerned, you're not my father anymore. I will have nothing more to do to you. I will not see you again. This is it. Goodbye. And he walks out. And, and Nagisa follows after him, calling out his name. And he's so furious that as she tries to grab a hold of his hand, he jerks his hand away from her and punches a brick wall or a cement wall nearby, tears his knuckles to pieces. And Nagisa's like, Tomia, stop. And so he rears back to punch the wall again. She literally like tackles him around the waist and says, Tomia, stop. And he just looks down in his fit of rage, and as soon as he sees her tear-filled face, he immediately just calms down and he just kind of collapses on the ground. And she's holding on to his waist, so she, he just kind of falls on his rear end, and she's just holding on to him. And she says, have you calmed down? And he says, yeah. She says, your hand's going to hurt tomorrow. And he says, yeah. And she says, your hand's going to hurt tonight when you take a bath, too. And he says, yeah. And he says, Nagisa? She says, yeah. And he says, let's get married. And she says, okay. And he says, are you really okay with a guy like me? As weak and pathetic as I am? And she says, yeah, I'm okay with you. For a long time, I've known you're the only one for me. She says, I'm really weak too. But I think when the two of us come together, we can be strong. And at that moment, watching the anime, this was a few months back, I realized that that was a complete lie, that that was completely impossible, and that love like that does not exist in this world. And on that note, we're going to have to go into a part two. Uh, all the preambles out of the way, um, and what led me to my thoughts on marriage, they started from that point right there. So that, that sounds very, again, bleak. It sounds bad. Stay tuned for part two. And for those of you, if I'll say I, none of this went from Ephesians like I thought it would. I quoted some Bible verses. Didn't get, I gave you the rough area where they were. As always, Google is your friend. Look behind me. Even though I didn't speak much about Jesus, and, what, and I spoke about what Christian marriage is, but I didn't talk about sin or salvation. Nonetheless, if anyone at this time wants to give their life to Jesus Christ, you realize, maybe not from what I've said, but just where you are in life, that you are a sinner, that you need forgiveness, that God's real, and you need his help. 
right now. Right now. Don't wait. Don't delay. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for you. Believe that he rose again. And tell him that you believe those things and that you need his forgiveness. And he, he will save you right then and there. And if you want a model prayer to pray, pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross, shedding your blood for the forgiveness of my sin. And I believe you rose again three days later, guaranteeing me eternal life in heaven with you. Please right now be my Lord, my God, and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer in a minute, congratulations. You are part of the family of God. Welcome aboard. It is good to have you. And, and I'll say things are going to get better in the next message, or at least they're going to, they may be a little bit muddied, but they're not going to be as bleak. Uh, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have all the answers, but I'll tell you what, read this a little bit every day. You'll get to know quite a bit about what God thinks about reality, how he created it, and how he wants you to live your life. Also, find a church home. Find some people who believe in Jesus like you do, who believe in the Bible as the Word of God. It's a great thing when you find people who believe the same thing as you. They can encourage and strengthen you, and you are always stronger in numbers. That applies to church and spiritually as well. You're much stronger in numbers. Find that group of people, that church, that will uplift you and support you and love you. Also, finally, pray, shoot up a little prayer every day. If it's as simple as, thank you, God, for this day, or, God, this day sucks. I need help. God hears those prayers, those simple little one-liners. Even if you don't say them, if you just think them. But if you direct them at Him, and it's not just a casual thought, but you're like, literally, God, help. Just those two words, God, help. He hears that, and He will answer. Guys, thank you very much for listening to this episode and for listening to me ramble on and talk to you about myself. Look forward to part two, and um, again, leave your comments um, in the comment section down below. Uh, even though this isn't a complete message, don't care. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. And tomorrow, well, actually today is Sunday, so come up Sunday night. I'll do part two, and we'll talk about the rest of this thing. I love you. God bless.